Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the software tour part one of the Sony Ericsson Xperia X1. Now, the reason that I'm doing this in two parts is because there's a lot to talk about. In the first part, which is right now, I'm going to talk all about the panels and how they actually work. And then in the second part, we're going to talk about the programs and the settings and all those sort of things that we normally talk about. So let's start off. I'm going to turn on the turn on the device, and what you'll notice is that the screen will actually fade on, which is a very nice touch kind of like the HTC Touch Diamond and the Touch Pro. And what you see here right now is actually a panel. It's the standard Windows Mobile Today Screen panel. Okay, so let me try to explain this to you. In Windows Mobile, you have the Today Screen, obviously. You probably know that, which shows you your next appointment and your tasks and your unread messages and all that sort of thing. Then, if you want to get to a program, you go to Start, and you go to Programs, and then go from there pretty much, right? Well, Sony Ericsson is kind of changing the way that we think about Windows Mobile with the panel interface. The idea is that the Today, the today screen becomes a platform for programs to run. So you can have interactive content or other little interesting animated bits on your Today screen. Kind of like an active desktop. Um, now, the reason you would want that is because I think the idea is that your Today screen is what you see when you turn on your phone. And if you can do something else with that beyond the standard, you know, Windows Mobile Today screen, that could be a really compelling offering. So let me show you some of these panels that, that we can use. Uh, to access the panels, we just press on the panel button here. And here they are. You get nine panels. You can add more panels. Although right now there are very, very few panels. I think there are about two extra. I'll talk about all of the panels soon. And if you rotate the device to landscape, you will get a nice little animation that seems a little bit choppy, but I don't, I don't think it is. It's kind of pauses in the middle, but I think it's supposed to. Um, now we can choose a panel either by tapping on it with our finger, or we can use the optical joystick to move around, and you get this little sound. So let's just go down the list to the different panels, and I'll explain what each of them does. So I'm going to start off with this one, and it takes a minute, and what happens is that you get a picture of the panel, and then it actually becomes active, and the top and bottom Windows mobile bar comes back. So this panel I've configured a little bit. I have uh, the, the weather up here, 48 degrees in Philadelphia. I have the pocketnow.com RSS feed right here, and the allshadow.com RSS feed. So this is a pretty useful uh, panel for me during the daytime when I want to monitor the sites and see uh, what's, what's been posted. Um, we can change a lot of different things about this. And by the way, I also have my next calendar appointments listed right here. If we go into options, from here we can change the color scheme. We can change the clock, we can change the city. If we go over to web feeds, that's where you enter in the RSS feeds that you want to monitor on your Today screen, which is pretty cool if you think about it. Um, and over here on the right side is Launcher, which dictates which buttons you have um, to launch various programs. You can add some speed dial entries and that sort of thing. So that is the second panel. It's pretty useful for during the daytime when you have a lot of work to do. Let's go back to the panel interface. And by the way, I should mention, you can change the view of the panel interface by pressing this button here, and then you get this kind of shuffle view, where you can slide your finger, or, or I'm using my stylus, and I think I clicked on one there. Let's go back in there. So you can use your finger to kind of shuffle through them as if they were a bunch of cards. So let's go to the next one. This is the, uh, this is the fish panel. And I'm going to have to read off of a piece of paper the instructions that come with it to explain what this does. So if you look at this fish um, right here, this, this black one, it's called the Demikin. And the fish's color will actually turn red when the battery goes below 10%. So that's pretty cool. Um, if you look at this fish down here, that's called a Wacken. And the fish's color is silver when the sound is turned off. So let me turn the sound off and you'll see that guy turn silver. Yep, see there it goes, turn silver. Um, the other fish, which, which just came off the screen, uh, this one right here is an indicator when there is an unread message. And you can see at the top of the screen I've got a little mailbox. And then there's another fish that's not on the screen that will come on the screen if I um, have a missed call. So this is kind of useful and it's got, uh, you know, if you touch on the screen, the fish will actually come towards your finger or your stylus. So it's a bit of a novelty. This may be good for the weekend when you don't really care about, um, you know, reading RSS feeds or something like that, and you just want to see the time and the date and see if you have a missed call. Okay, so let's go to the next panel. I'm going to press the panel button there. And I'm going to go back to the other panel view because I like it a lot better. I can see them all. 
and we're going to go to this one over here. Now this is a second version of the panel you saw with the RSS feed on it, although you can customize it differently. So here I have two calendars set up for October and November. Um, I also have recent programs. I have my calendar. So again, this may be a, a good uh, panel to have when you're traveling and you want to be able to schedule dates easily by looking at two calendars at once. I don't know. I'm trying to make things up here when you may actually use them. Uh, you can change the color scheme. These are e the exact same options as the ones that we looked at before. So you can have two panels doing the same things, just set up a little bit differently. Okay, let's go back into the panels. Okay, the next panel is super cool. It's the multimedia panel, which basically puts an entire multimedia uh, program right on your today's screen. And it really reminds me of Windows Media Center. I'm gonna use my finger here. So I can flick my finger, I can go music, video, pictures. Uh, hopefully you can see that, let me zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go to uh, videos. So video, and I'm going to scroll down to that. And I'm going to go to uh, this one, and we're, it's going to play a video. And of course the sound is off, so we could demonstrate the fish, um, the fish panel. But if you tap on the screen, you kind of get iPod-like controls, and we can go back or we can change the volume. And let me, uh, let me turn on the sound so that we can hear and I'll go to a different video, or actually I'll go to the same video. Very, very good video quality with this 800 by 480 screen. It's very beautiful. Okay, so let me show you the other uh, bits of the multimedia pane, because there is more to see. So we can go back quite easily by clicking on the left side of the screen here. Um, we can go to, let's go to pictures, and we could go to the pictures on my storage card. And this takes a little bit of time. It'll show you a thumbnail of all the pictures, but um, after the thumbnails loads, it gets a little bit faster. And you can flick your finger up to kind of scroll through them. And to select a picture, you just tap on it. And then if we press play, we get a photo slideshow, a really nice looking photo slideshow. This is beautiful, fading in and out and everything. Okay, let's stop that. I tap on the screen and press the back button. Very, f very finger friendly. The screen is super sensitive. It's working quite well. So let's go back here to um, music. And we can go to albums. And let's go to, um, let's go to this one. We get album art. And you can continue to work on your device while this music is playing. So I can go into programs. You know, that sort of thing. Really neat, really neat. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to show you in the multimedia application. Um, we could also go to games, although we're not going to cover that. And uh, in settings, we can make a few small s changes to, to this multimedia panel. We can change the background and have it be animated. So if you watch that now, you can see little, little icons floating around the screen. Uh, just a cool little effect. All right, so that is the multimedia panel. Very well done. Um, it's a fantastic media application. Let's go back into the panels and continue. Okay, here is the... FM radio panel. It's not a program on the Xperia, it's actually a panel. And in order to get this to work, I need to plug in my headset. So I'm going to do that up here. And I'm going to switch it on. And it works really well. You can do you can do presets, you can change the volume, use the speaker or the headphones. So it's a really robust, easy to use um, FM radio program. Okay, let's go back into the panels. And let's go to the Google panel. This is pretty neat. What it does is it puts a Google search right on your today screen. And it also gives you links to things on the bottoms like Google Maps, Google Mail, Calendar, Photos. These three icons here will take you to Pocket Internet Explorer or Opera, whereas the one on the left will open the Google Maps mobile uh, application. I'll, I'll do that now. It comes up very fast. Um, and so from here, you can search Google, and I was thinking to myself, is this actually faster than just going to start um, Internet Explorer, Favorites, Google, and 
typing in something. Well, you just heard all the steps to do that. Yes, it is faster. To switch to a panel, press the panel, press the Google, and start typing. That's one or two less steps than going the long way. So it's a, it's a, it's a needed pain, and I think it'll, uh, it'll help a lot of people do faster Google searches. So let's go back into the panels. And over here we have the SPB shell. You may have read in the news, maybe on Pocket Now, that SPB has made a panel for, for the X1 customers for free. And basically what we have here is SPB Mobile Shell for free, a $30 program for free if you have an X1. And I love Mobile Shell because it, it has gesture support so you can swipe your finger to change the panel. Um, on the left here we have programs. We can, we can quickly, quickly get into the internet uh, favorites by, by going through this. It has very awesome animations, um, multimedia support, so you can quickly get to that kind of thing. And it has settings, so you can change all the animations if you want to turn them off. And then if we go to the center button here, we get the current temperature, plus we get notification alerts. So if we have any email, new SMS, new calls, they'll show up here. We also get the next list of, of uh, calendar appointments that are on the roster and below that is a nice calendar if you want to reference the day of the week and to the right we have favorite people so that we can dial by just clicking on their picture or send them a text message easily that way so this is a free panel and it's basically a thirty dollar program very good let's go back into the back into the panel menu and finally, we have this last one that I downloaded from the panel website. It's really crappy. Um, it's basically just a, a viewer for your photos. It's really a waste of, um, of a panel because you can just use the multimedia panel to do this. Or you can just go straight into, or you can just go straight into my pictures. Okay, to change a panel, you open up the panel interface and you click this one in the bottom right corner. And then you choose the panel that you want to change. So I'm going to choose this one and click in the center again. And then we get a list of all of our panels and we can scroll down and we could choose one that we want to replace that one or if we want to get more panels, we click more panels here at the top and we are taken to a Sony Ericsson website. Let me show you the panels that are out there now. Uh, Maybe tough to see, we have a dash wire panel which would be pretty cool if you use dash wire. It's a very, very cool program. Second up, we have SBB Mobile Shell which we've already used. The third one is Cool Hunting which is a panel that doesn't work. It, I don't even know what it does, but when I try to load it, nothing happens. And on the bottom here, we have slideshow panel, which is the same um, thing that you saw earlier with the slideshow of the pictures. And that's really it. Uh, there are no other panels right now, and uh, it would be great if there were additional panels, of course. And one thing I want to mention before I sign off, um, all of the panels actually work really well in landscape. They're made to work in landscape. So um, here we have that blue one that I showed you earlier. And uh, if I flip it over to landscape, it'll reorient itself so that I can see everything. And there it is. So what do I think of the panel interface? Well, to be honest, I really like it. I think it's a great idea to get rich content on your today's screen. Um, unfortunately, right now, the selection of panels is painfully limited to just a few. But I think if the developer community embraces this whole idea, um, the X1 could have a lot of really, really cool panels um, that, that make interacting with the device a really great experience. Um, Next up, we're going to talk about all the programs and settings included in the X1 in the next video. So look out for that. We'll be back with more soon.